Hello again, this is Mr. Liao, and today we're doing section 13.8. Hopefully you were able to wrestle with 13.7. Today is going to be something similar as we're looking at the double angle and half angle formulas of sine and cosine. So here we go. Today's question, how do we use the double angle and half angle formulas for sine and cosine? The double angle formulas are for sine of 2a and the cosine of 2a. Now to derive those, we use the addition formulas that we learned in the previous section. So we're going to look at double angle formulas. Double angle means sine of 2a, 2 theta, 2 alpha. You get the idea. So the sine of 2 alpha equals the sine of alpha plus alpha. Now using the addition formulas we learned in the previous section, you can convert that into sine alpha cosine alpha plus cosine alpha sine alpha. And because those two are pretty much the same term, you can combine them. So sine of 2 alpha is 2 sine alpha cosine alpha. And that is the double angle formula for sine. For cosine, we do the same thing. Cosine of 2 alpha equals cosine alpha plus alpha. And we apply the cosine addition formula. So you get cosine alpha times cosine alpha minus sine alpha times sine alpha, which means that cosine of 2 alpha equals cosine squared alpha minus sine squared alpha. From that, and applying the sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, you can convert those into two additional variations of cosine 2 alpha. So if you substitute 1 minus sine squared alpha for cosine squared alpha, you get cosine of 2 alpha equals 1 minus 2 sine squared alpha. If you substitute 1 minus cosine squared alpha for sine squared alpha, the cosine of 2 alpha is then 2 cosine squared alpha minus 1. So the four formulas in yellows are the ones you should know for testing purposes and for your future mathematical reference. You really only need to know the cosine squared alpha minus sine squared alpha for cosine 2 and alpha because you can get the other two just by using the Pythagorean identity of sine squared alpha plus cosine squared alpha equals 1. Example 1. If sine alpha is 4 fifths and alpha is in the second quadrant, find the sine of 2 alpha and cosine 2 alpha. The first thing we need to do is calculate cosine of alpha because we need that to solve both double angle formulas. If alpha is in the second quadrant, is the cosine of alpha negative or positive? Well, remember that x is negative in quadrant 2, so cosine of alpha is negative. So, using our Pythagorean identity of sine squared alpha plus cosine squared alpha equals 1, we now can solve for cosine squared alpha by plugging in 4 fifths for sine of alpha. So 4 fifths squared plus cosine squared alpha is 1. If you do the algebra and square root the right side, you get the cosine of alpha is negative 3 fifths. Remember, it's negative because cosine of alpha, excuse me, alpha is in the second quadrant, so the cosine of alpha is negative. So now that we know that cosine of alpha is negative 3 fifths, we can now plug in using the double angle formulas. So the sine of 2 alpha is 2 sine alpha cosine alpha, and we plug in sine of alpha as 4 fifths and 3 fifths, negative 3 fifths for cosine of alpha. Multiply those together, whoops, wrong way, and you get the sine of 2 alpha is negative 24 20 fifths. So just first solve for cosine of alpha, figure out which quadrant it's in, and then plug in the values. To figure out cosine of 2 alpha, it's a lot simpler. And you can go ahead and try that on your own, and pause the video, or you can just listen to me babble on about it. So the cosine of 2 alpha is cosine squared alpha minus sine squared alpha. So we have negative 3 fifths squared minus 4 fifths squared, which is 9 20 fifths minus 16 20 fifths, and that equals negative 7 20 fifths. So it's pretty simple. If you are given sine of alpha, you can figure out the cosine of alpha using the sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And remember to check the sine of the value because of which quadrant alpha is in. Half angle formulas. Half angle formulas is basically like the sine of theta over 2 or the cosine of theta over 2. Half angle formulas can be derived by replacing alpha with theta over 2 in the formulas for cosine of 2 alpha. 
So if you actually do the math, and I'm not going to do it, you can look at it in your book to see how they derive it. You get that the sine of theta over 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine theta over 2. For the cosine of theta over 2, it's equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine theta over 2. So you notice that cosine theta over 2 means positive 1 plus cosine. Sine theta over 2 means 1 minus cosine the numerator of the radicand. So these are the half angle formulas, and these will help you solve problems as well. Now, how do you know whether to use the plus or the minus? Well, that depends on the quadrant of theta over 2. So remember which quadrant's sine is positive. If theta over 2 is in the first or second quadrant, then the sine of theta over 2 is positive. If it's in the third or fourth quadrant, the sine of theta over 2 is negative. For cosine theta over 2, it would be positive if theta over 2 is in the first and fourth quadrants, and negative if theta over 2 is in the second and third quadrants. So that's how you determine whether it's positive or negative. So make sure you always check that. Let's go to example 2a. Simplify 2 sine 17 cosine 17 to a single angle without evaluating. So all we're asked to do here is to try to convert this into the sine or cosine of something. So the formula in the format is the sine double angle formula. You can tell because it's sine 2 sine alpha cosine alpha. Here the role of alpha is played by 17. So the sine of 2 times 17 is equal to 2 sine 17 cosine 17 and working with the left side of the equation, that means the expression is equal to the sine of 34 degrees. So look to see what the expression resembles in terms of the half or double angle formula. <clears throat> Once you figure that out, it's a matter of just plugging in the right numbers and making sure you evaluate the expression correctly. Let's go to example 2b. Simplify to a single angle without evaluating. The square root of 1 plus cosine of 100 divided by 2. So again, you want to see which half or double angle formula that that expression resembles. And if you have already tried to work at it and pause the video, you will know that the value under the radical is 1 plus cosine of 100. So which half angle formula are you going to use? Since it's positive inside the radicand, then you are going to be using the cosine half angle formula. So cosine theta over 2 equals the square root of 1 plus cosine theta over 2. Well, now that you know which half angle formula you're using, it's pretty simple. Since you know theta is 100, we know that theta over 2 is 50. So to specify this as a single angle, all you have to do is substitute in 50 for theta over 2. So the answer is the cosine of 50 degrees. Example 3a, find the exact value of sine of 5 pi over 8. Which formula do we use and what value do we use for alpha or theta, or whatever variable you want to use? <clears throat> so you're going to be either using a half angle or double angle formula. And you're going to use the half angle because for the original theta, theta will be 5 pi over 4. Because you can figure out the sine or cosine of 5 pi over 4. Next question is, which quadrant is 5 pi over 8 in? And then is the answer to the expression sine 5 pi over 8 going to be positive or negative? Well, 5 pi over 8 is in quadrant number 2. Since it's in quadrant 2, the sine in quadrant 2 is positive. So you plug in the sine half angle formula, and the sine of 5 pi over 8 equals 1 minus the cosine of 5 pi over 4 all over 2. You know that the cosine of 5 pi over 4, or you should know, is negative radical 2 over 2, so you plug that in, and then you just simplify the radical and the fraction. So you get 1 plus radical 2 over 2 all over 2. That becomes that. Move the 2 downstairs, and you can square root the 4 to the bottom to make it a 2. So the answer is radical 2 plus radical 2, yeah, whatever it says in there. All right, so. When you see a 5 pi over 8, you can use the half angle formula knowing that the original angle is 5 pi over 4. Find the exact value of cosine of 5 pi over 8. So this is the same thing as the previous one. We're going to use 5 pi over 4 as our theta. Is our answer going to be positive or negative? Well, we know that it's in the second quadrant, 
and the second quadrant cosine is negative. So we plug in the cosine half angle formula, cosine 5 pi over 8 equals the negative of the square root of 1 plus cosine 5 pi over 4 all over 2. And it's similar to the previous example. You're just going to plug things in and solve the fraction. And I will go through this step by step, and you can see how you reach the answer. Three C. Find the exact value of cosine squared of 15 degrees minus sine squared of 15 degrees. So again, you want to think about which half or double angle formula does this resemble? And what do we use as alpha or theta, or the original angle? You probably could have figured out by now by either looking at your notes or just remembering that that resembles the cosine double angle formula. And the double angle here means that it's 2 times 15. 15 is your alpha. So if you plug that into the equation, cosine of 2 times 15 equals the cosine squared of 15 minus the sine squared of 15. So 15 plays the role of alpha. So cosine 2 alpha equals cosine squared alpha minus sine squared alpha. So we know that the right side is what we're trying to solve. So you just simplify the left side, and the answer is cosine 30. And the exact value of cosine 30 is radical 3 over 2. So when you get these questions looking for the exact value and you don't know it because it's not 45 degrees or 60 degrees or 30 degrees or pi over 4 or pi over 6, then you can look to the half or double angle formulas to try to manipulate the expression to get the answer you're looking for. Example 4. Prove the identity sine of 2 alpha over 1 minus cosine 2 alpha equals cotangent alpha. So here you're doing the same thing you did in the previous section except now you're going to incorporate the double angle formulas so all you do is substitute the expression that's equal to sine of 2 alpha and the cosine of 2 alpha and there it is 2 sine alpha cosine alpha over 1 minus cosine squared alpha minus sine squared alpha the bottom all I did was arrange the parentheses using the associative property, so 1 minus cosine squared plus sine squared alpha, and if you guys remember, 1 minus cosine squared alpha is sine squared alpha, so you get 2 sine alpha cosine alpha all over sine squared alpha plus sine squared alpha, and from here it's pretty simple, 2 sine alpha cosine alpha over 2 sine squared alpha, the 2's cancel out, the sine in the numerator drops out, so you get cosine alpha over sine alpha, which simplifies to cotangent alpha. So when you see a half or double angle formula, and you're generally not going to prove identities with half angle formulas because if you look at it, it just looks kind of ugly. But the identities, excuse me, the formulas for the double angle formulas do come in quite handy. And you might use them from time to time to go not just from the double angle formula to the single angle formula, but the other way around. Finally, example five. If alpha is between 180 and 360 and the cosine of alpha is negative 12 thirteenths, find the sine of alpha over 2. So we are looking for the half angle of alpha. If alpha is between 180 and 360, the first thing we have to figure out is what's the range of alpha over 2. We're doing this because we need to figure out whether it's positive or negative or which quadrant it's in. So if 180 is between alpha and 360, then the range of alpha over 2 is 90 and 180. This makes sense. This is basic. Algebra dividing all three parts of the inequality by 2. So which quadrant now is alpha over 2 in? And is the answer to sine of alpha two over 2 going to be positive or negative? Well, we're in the second quadrant, and the sine in the second quadrant is positive. So you are going to use the positive value of the half angle formula. So the sine of alpha over 2, there's your formula, equals, in this case, positive the square root of 1 minus cosine alpha over 2. We know what the cosine of alpha is, so we just plug it in. 1 plus 12 thirteenths over 2. And you just simplify and simplify. And you get this. And don't forget, you need to rationalize the denominator. So you multiply the top and bottom by radical 26. And your answer is 5 root 26 over 26. So again, the step to solving this problem is first to figure out or ascertain what quadrant alpha over 2 is in, and that will tell you whether to use the positive or negative square root. 
Finally, we need to figure out the cosine of alpha over 2, so we apply the same approach. We know that alpha over 2 is in the second quadrant, so now is the cosine of alpha over 2 positive or negative? Well, the cosine of a second quadrant angle is, of course, negative. So we are going to use the negative square root. And here's your cosine half angle formula. And you plug in negative 12 thirteenths for cosine of alpha. So it's negative that quantity. And again, you just simplify the fraction, rationalize the denominator, and your answer is negative radical 26 over 26. So go ahead and try some of those problems. The homework will be given to you during class on Monday. So if you have any questions in the meantime about these notes or the homework, you can email me at eliao at musd.org or post a message to me on the Facebook page. I will try to respond as quickly as I can.